Hello, my name is Kevin Anikowski, and this episode is on Piaget. The next highest yield developmental approach comes from Jean Piaget. He is known for studying children and had noticed that children reach certain developmental milestones, what he called notions of readiness, a time when a child has reached a higher mental level. He also noticed that there was a specific way in which the child brought in new information, which he called assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation involves adding new experiences to fit your current experiences. And as bad as this sounds, I think of like a type of mnemonic, which is, you can never get enough ass. Each one falls under the category of getting ass, so you don't change your schema, you just add a new experience to it of getting ass. Now, assimilation and accommodation are different. Accommodation involves accommodating existing schemas to new information. So if you have thought every two-legged creature was human, but then you saw a two-legged kangaroo, you would have to adjust your idea of what two-legged creatures are and thus accommodate. When we're young, we must use repetitive processes to understand the world around us and make sure it's consistent, like what Piaget called primary, secondary, and tertiary circular reactions. Although there are three other sensory motor substages as well, like reflexes, these ones are the highest yield of the six. Primary circular reactions deal with primarily you, like sucking your thumb or flapping your arms, whereas secondary circular reactions use things outside of ourselves, like the environment, like observing what happens when you drop that cup to the ground. Of course your mother has to pick it up, but you can never be too sure that it's going to fall back down to the ground when you let it go again, right? All right, now that we have an idea of what's going to happen, how about we change it up a little bit, like throwing the cup even further? These are tertiary circular reactions, changing something to see what the result is. These reactions are critical for the sensory motor stage, which lasts until object permanence is reached, and peekaboo is no longer surprising because you know that your mom doesn't actually vanish when her hands cover her face. But it takes at least two years of life to figure this out. Next is the pre-operational stage, which involves many terms. For instance, egocentrism, which is the world being seen only through your perspective. When you're younger, did you think that you were a special little snowflake? Well, if you did, your parents lied to you. Well, that may be. But really, this would be called a personal fable due to your egocentrism. The pre-operational stage also includes symbolic thinking, which, as you would expect, involves symbols or images to represent a real-life idea, like words. So symbolic thinking is basically just thinking in symbols, as well as centration, which is focusing on one aspect of a situation. Straightforward. Elkind expanded on Piaget's work and added the personal fable, which was just mentioned, as well as adolescent egocentrism, which is just egocentrism at older ages. Then, once conservation is reached, a.k.a. knowing that pouring a glass of water from a tall glass to a short glass doesn't actually give you less water, they move to the concrete operational stage, about age 7. The concrete operational stage lasts until about age 11, which is when children begin to use abstract thought. Abstract thought signifies the final stage, formal operational. And that wraps up Piaget. But before we move on to Kohlberg's theory of moral development, let's hit Vygotsky's cognitive developmental theory, which is often compared to Piaget's. Vygotsky's theory is simple in regards to what the MCAT wants you to know. Vygotsky states that we all have a zone of proximal development as a child, which is the area of knowledge we can't reach without a guiding figure Vygotsky called a more knowledgeable other, a social interactionist approach to cognition because it's a social interaction between the student and more knowledgeable other. Vygotsky's contributions were limited due to tuberculosis taking his life at age 37. Some of his final writing notes in 1934 even showed red specks indicative of the TB lung hemorrhaging. Interesting. Now that we're talking about learning with more knowledgeable others, we should quickly mention the Matthew effect. The Matthew effect is the widening gap between low and high achievers because of the compounding achievements of high achievers. It's given the name Matthew because of the quote from the Gospel according to Matthew. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But for him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And that's the end of the episode.